In this lesson, we're going to introduce the concepts of iMates. An iMate basically is half of an assembly constraint, and we're going to place each one of those halves on the individual parts. And then when we place them into the assembly, each of the halves will come together to form a complete constraint. The file that I currently have open is called iMatePin.ipt, and it can be found in your Chapter 9 Exercise folder. To create an iMate, I'm going to go under the Tools pull-down menu, and from here I'm going to go down and click on Create iMate. And you'll see that the dialog box is exactly the same as though you were applying a regular assembly constraint with one part of the problem is missing here. You'll notice that for the selection there's only one. Like I said, we're only going to be applying half the constraint. So in this case I'm going to apply an insert constraint. And I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom circular edge. And if I expand on the dialog box, I'm going to type in a name, so I'm going to call it imate underscore insert. Before I click OK, I'm going to go back and I'm going to copy that name to the clipboard, because what I want to do is I'm going to have the opposite part have the exact same constraint with the exact name. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here, and you'll notice now in my browser, I have an imate entry called the imate insert. So for here, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And then I'm going to make the iMate plate part active, and it too can be found in your Chapter 9 Exercise folder. Now we're going to repeat this process. I'm going to go under the Tools, Create iMate, and again, we're going to do an insert. And I'm going to select the circular edge. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to show you another method. So in this case, I forgot to give it the name that I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the iMates folder. I'm going to right click over the constraint and then select properties from the menu. Now for the name, this is where our, I'm going to go back and paste in the name that we previously had. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice a glyph is appearing representing that iMate. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to start up a new assembly file and let's place in the plate. Done. Right click done. And now let's place in the pin. And what I want to do now is I want to check use iMates. So when I go back and do that, Inventor will analyze to see if there is a matching iMate and it will utilize that. So in this case, click on open. And you'll see that it popped in. If I right mouse click, I do have an option. So I could tell Inventor to use iMates again or not. Place all matching. So if I had multiple options that were going back in there, for example, um, a pattern, it would go back and place that pin in the entire pattern of all those. So in this case, that's all I have. So I'm just going to click in the graphics window to place that one in there. And then we'll hit the escape key because that's all that I want. So now you'll notice if we go back to our browser, we have our insert constraint was applied. And if I go back and try to drag that part back in there, you'll see that it is fully constrained, or in this case, it's constrained in the hole. It can still spin around. For this portion of the exercise, I've closed out all my files that were opened, and I opened up the file called imatedrag.iam, also found in your Chapter 9 exercise folder. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to place component, and from the Chapter 9 folder, we're going to slide over, and I'm looking for the file called imatepindrag, and it has an identical imate on the pin as it does in the plate, as we've done in the previous portion of the exercise. But what I'm going to do in this case is uncheck Use iMate, click Open. So this is going to run through this scenario. I placed it in a component that had an iMate, but I forgot to check the Use iMates option. You saw that it was also available there in the right mouse click menu. So as I go back and I drag that component, you can see that the iMate glyph appears. I can still assemble these components utilizing the iMates by holding down the Alt key on the keyboard and clicking on the iMate glyph and dragging. And you'll note as soon as I start to drag it, the glyph also appeared on the hole. So I'm just going to drag my cursor right over it. And as soon as I do, you hear that it snaps back in, alerting me to the fact that that constraint has been applied. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close all my files and what we're going to look at next is going to be composite iMates. And I'm going to start a, a brand new part file and we're just going to draw on a plate. I'm not going to waste any time at this point constraining it. I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply three constraints, three iMate constraints. So I'm going to apply a mate constraint to the top, apply, and then I'm going to apply a flush constraint to the top and to the right. I'm just going to take all the defaults. Now if I expand the iMates folder, you'll see that I have the three different iMates that I just placed. I'm going to hold down the control key, select all three, then right click, and what I can do is create a composite. So by doing the composite, you'll see that it nested all three of those underneath. So what I want to do in this case is we're going to create another exact same constraints, I make constraints, and then when we place them together, Inventor will assemble all three of those as though they were a single constraint here. So let's go ahead and save this, and we'll just call it comp1. Close this file and we'll quickly do the exact same thing for another part. So again, tools pull down, we'll create the mate up on top, and then let's apply a flush constraint to the back face here and also to the front face, we'll apply that. We'll turn those three as well into a composite. You'll see it's I make composite one just like the other one was. We'll go ahead and we'll save this file and we'll just call it comp2. And let's start up a new assembly again. And we'll place in our first plate. And just enter, repeat the command. And let's do COMP2 with the use iMate. In this case, you'll notice that it went back and made it those planes together. And it applied constraints. Again, if we go back into the browser, we can see that it applied the composite constraints.